Well, hello. I'm doing an extra video this week because we are going to, sorry, I'm excited. We are going to look at the Parker Vector. And I have several incarnations, both new and old, and the Parker XL. And we're going to compare it to the Waterman Allure. We're going to look at nibs, we're going to look at bodies, we're going to look at sections. We're going to look at even the packaging as much as is possible. So, let's dive into this. Quagmire. All right, so there they are. From left to right, we have a modern barrel for the Vector and cap. We have a vintage barrel and cap for the Vector, but with a modern nib and section. Modern nib and section and barrel and all that junk for a Vector. Uh, an older barrel, cap, nib, whatever for the Vector. We have a Parker Vector XL, and we have the Waterman Allure. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about these pens. So the first thing I want to get through, let's just take a look at the original Vector. Um, somebody's lighting is struggling. There we go. Maybe. There we go. All right, so the original Parker Vector, I bought one in Burgundy. I'll tell the whole story about how I ended up with one at the end of this. But, you know, it's got nice little finial, a plain arrow clip, which is a Parker deal. Has a thingy, and it's plastic. Open it up, it has a metal section. And the nib that, when I put it next to the other, is going to seem inadequate. Now, this is a fine nib. Unscrew it. Oh, I didn't put any ink in it. I might ink it up because my other two vectors are mediums. So I might yet do that. But kind of a small, slim pen. But this is the first fountain pen I ever owned. Not this specific one, but one like it. Uh, slim, but I was little then and it seemed to work. Now, uh, compare this. Oh, I, now I'm remembering why I didn't ink it up. Compare this to the more modern barrel. So the more modern barrel is at the bottom. The more modern barrel is more red, more of a candy red. And I just find it's uh, sharper. Now, it could be because it's not as worn. But uh, I just find the modern barrel less comfortable. So we'll put the vintage barrel back on. The vintage barrel, by the way, comes from probably the 1990s. Okay, I should just note that this one says made in the USA. The more modern one says... Want it? I couldn't even make a date code out of that. And then this one also says made in the USA. So we open it up. And yeah, you start to see one of the things I don't like. The newer ones just seem to be very sharp right here where the barrel meets the section. I don't care for that. And then this metal one. I'm trying to remember I want to ink this one up later. This metal one, which dates from 1996 according to the date code. This metal one is made in the UK. And... A white finial. Nothing there but a bit of a divot in it. And it's not metal, it's plastic. Open it up. Metal section still. Still the same tiny little cute nib. But there you go. And of course it has a proprietary Parker converter. Now let's put this side by side. Well, we'll put it side by side in a minute. Let's look, just take a look at the modern Vector XL. It's got a cute little finial with a black ring. Nothing on this finial. Still snap cap. Clear section, which I kind of like. Uh, a nib. But you can see all the workings inside. And it is a proprietary Parker thing. And then we've got the Waterman Allure. With, oh, is that the same finial? And nothing there. It does have a doodad of metal here. And then nib, feed, and whatnot. So we'll take a closer look and we'll compare them. But I want to turn your attention somewhere else. I've lost the packaging that the original Vector came in, but this is the packaging that this translucent Vector came in. 
No, joking. This is the packaging. Let's see if I can lay these out right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is the packaging that the Parker Vector XL and the Waterman Allure came in. Oh, which one is which? Oh, you can't tell? So we'll flip it up. We got some recycling doodads there. Here we got a Parker Vector XL. But I can feel there's recycling doodads under it. Here we've got Waterman Allure Pastel Green. So they put theirs on the end. Here we've got some new old junk. Both of them 2020. Europe brand Sarl. But this one says Waterman.com. This one says ParkerPen.com. And the Parker Pen has some by appointment to HM, the queen manufacturers of pens, pencils, and inks, Parker Pen Company. I can't read that. Litchfield. And then some other junk that's just like that. And the Waterman has nothing like that. As somebody pointed out, no, I'm not a royalist. Okay, so you pull them out. The Waterman gets that treatment. The Parker gets that treatment. And they look the same! I mean, okay, the Waterman is a little cooler, but still. Unzip. Unzip. Okay, the Waterman's got a nice soft felt bed. This one's just got a cardboard bed, but I mean, I mean my God, isn't that the same? Snork this puppy out. Snork this puppy out. The same. So, it's not a surprise to me that the pens are the same. And, you know, who can blame Newell? Save on some packaging. You know, you, you, you print some different branding on it. No big deal. Because, um, honestly, who cares about packaging? Well, I guess some people do, but I'm just not into that kind of thing. Although, vintage packaging is sometimes kind of cool. And I just put them in the wrong sleeves. So let's take a closer gander at my uninked up Parker Vector. And my uninked up, or sorry, my inked up Parker Vector XL. Um, do you see it? How about now? Did that help? Definitely a much smaller nib on the vin on the older version. Flip them over. I'm seeing fins and all kinds of junk on the new one. The old one, not so much. Although I do know that there are fins inside the barrel. So now you're saying... Wait, wait, what about that allure? Tell me about that allure. So let's flip this bad boy over again. We'll start this side. Actually, let's start with them both cap. Let's get the full experience. Finials. Yeah, same finial. Clip attaches the same way. Okay, clips are a little different, but, you know, sheet metal. Oh, what's this? We've got a piece of metal around the part, the waterman. But look more closely. Do you see it? A tiny gap between the cap and the body. Uncap the pens. Let's look at some nibbage. All right, so we got a clear section on the Parker. Other than that, it's the same section. Are the nibs different? I mean, without taking out a calipers to measure, other than a little bit different decoration and label, they look the same. Flip! What about the feeds? Other than what ink is staining them, they sure look the same. So really, the difference that I see here is just cosmetic. 
So we got to put something into this Parker because I want to write with fine as well as medium. All right, so this won't even be a slightly scientific comparison, but we're going to compare the different Parker vectors. So I have a Parker vector here with a fine nib in it. This is an original. The new one is the Parker vector XL. So we'll just go Parker vector. I'm not even sure what all I'm going to write. But this has a fine nib in it. And let's see, we'll do a... None of them are flexy, so we won't bother with that test. We'll do that thing. This thing. Oh, gosh. This thing. Eh, that's good enough. And let's do just a miniature Pierre Gustafson test. So, a reliable writer, I like that. Um, it's just a little uncomfortable to hold. Now we're going to do the Parker Vector Fine. That's not the same ink. I know. Did I say fine? I meant medium. Why do you think I use Parker Quink washable blue in all my review, all my uh, first impressions? Well, gee, I thought you liked the color. It's a darn pretty color. No, it isn't really, but I go with it. So this is the first one. Oh, what the heck? Let's write the names of the inks for posterity because somebody's going to wonder. So this first one is Krishna Azalea. Plus, this will give some badly needed vertical to a very horizontal image. The second one is Rohrer and Klingner Salix. Now we're going to switch to the Parker Vector XL. Arr. Rawr. He's a medium nib. And I got to zoom out just a bit. There we go. That'll work. Um, this is writing very nicely. So if you remember in the original first impression, it was skipping quite a lot. That problem is now solved. I think it just needed a special clean out. And the ink in it is Monte Grappa. Bordeaux. UX. There we go. And finally, the Watchman Allure. Not quite enough room to fit it, so we'll just do that thing. Um, so I'm seeing that the fine and the medium, yeah, there's a difference, but it's slight. This medium is much broader than this medium. This fine is definitely what I would consider a fine. Kind of wettish. Mini Pierre Gustafson test. And since I don't know for certain which Waterman cartridge I put in it, because it's not labeled, we'll just go Waterman Blue. So, um, just to compare the lines, we'll start with the fine down here. So here's the fine. Uh, we will compare it to... First, the medium, and then I'll put that here, then here, then here. The colors are probably different enough, I don't need to label, but that's the medium. And then we will compare it to the XL, Norg, Dorg, Yorg. Blorg, uh, 
And finally, we will compare it to the Allure. Yorp, Dorp. Uh. I'm feeling stupid. <clears throat> All right, so when so I clearly did not plan that out to begin with. So let's put your this little snickle puppy up here. So This whole bit down here is unnecessary, and you've got a comparison. So it looks like my Waterman Allure is definitely the finest of the bunch, but the Parker Vector old one is also pretty fine. And actually, it looks like the other one is bigger. Okay, so that's as clear as mud on a hay, in a hay field. So uh, let's do that. Let's do, make sure I do the right pen. And the allure is just kind of all over the place. So I uh, promise to perfect that test for next time, but that's what you're getting. So uh, we'll close with a few comments and a little bit of personal history. And uh, yeah, I, I would just say that I'm excited to see how Waterman and Parker are playing with uh, the low, the lower budget end of their line. All right, so uh, full disclosure, the Parker Vector was my very first fountain pen. When I was like 9 or 10 years old, uh, my family received a catalog of pens in the mail. I don't remember what company it was from, but it was full of pens. And yeah, I couldn't afford any of them. I was like 9 or 10, fourth grade. And... Uh, I was really puzzled by the presence of fountain pens. So I asked Mom, Pa, Squirrel, you know, what's a fountain pen? Because I have no idea. And uh, their answer really didn't explain anything. I imagine my 10-year-old brain was thinking, you know, a literal fountain of ink. But the reality turned out to be just as good. Um, so paging through it, I decided there were two pens that I could actually afford. One was a Schaefer of some kind that I obviously didn't buy. The other was a Parker Vector, and I was just quite taken by the Parker Dual Fold. Couldn't afford it, but there was a Parker Vector I could afford. It was like $3.99. So, that's what I settled on, but... Oops! I'm a 10-year-old! How do you order from a catalog? And no, the internet was not a thing back then. So, I was not going on the internet to order it. Um... Uh, but we lived at that time fairly close to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So we went down to the Colonial Park Mall one day. And at a store that's no longer there, I checked, called the News Center. Uh, it had kind of a weird combination of magazines, huge magazine selection, some books, party supplies, and stationery. I found a Parker Vector. I found not this Parker Vector, but one almost like it. Uh, a red Parker Vector. <clears throat> it was called Burgundy. But anyway, I bought it, got home, uh, inked it up, and yeah, I liked how it wrote. The only thing I didn't like was it came with Parker Quink Washable Blue, which is kind of ironic now that my channel is very firmly associated with Parker Quink Washable Blue, but there you go. Um, I always thought I want black ink. So, uh, my next trip to Harrisburg, I bought myself some black ink cartridges. And, uh, that pen and I were friends for many years. Uh, you, I remember using it in eighth grade and a substitute teacher remarking on it. You know, I just used it continuously. And yeah, I wasn't that kid that loses a pen right away and says, Oh, gee, I had a pen just five seconds ago. I don't know what happened to it. I wasn't that kid. So I kept good track of them. Um... I did lose the pen in one of my moves, um, basically my move from West Hope to Turtle Lake. Somewhere in that process it disappeared. And so uh, 
the house in Turtle Lake has been torn down. So I hope it survived in the house in West Hope and the person who owns it now is enjoying that pen, but you know, could have been dropped in the yard and got chewed up by a lawnmower too, so we'll never know. But <clears throat> I do have a sentimental attachment to the Parker Vector. But adult me has used a lot more pens than the Parker Vector, and I realize the shortcomings. Now this more vintage barrel, fairly comfortable to hold. It doesn't have the sharp step, but uh, kind of slim. And I don't mind that so much because I like vintage pens, but not the most comfortable section. And I have noticed a lot of uh, our foreign exchange students who use fountain pens will use the Parker Vector, but kind of not that great a pen. I mean, it works, it's reliable, but it's mm, not that great. So, uh, it really looking very dated and just time for a refresh and Parker came through. Parker came through, they came out with a Waterman Allure. Okay, back up there. You've seen the Waterman Allure. Parker came out with the Parker Vector XL. Now, I wasn't looking for a Parker Vector XL. I was looking for, what are some low-cost pens I can spend this YouTube check I just got on? So I bought a bunch of Schaefer's, which I haven't even published yet. I haven't even filmed their videos. Um, and, and then I found a Waterman Allure, and I found the Parker... And, uh, while looking at the Waterman Allure, because I was curious, because I don't own that many modern Waterman pens. While I was looking at it, I found this Parker Vector that looked quite different. So, Waterman Allure, Parker Vector, are they the same pen? Yeah, I think so. Um, you, you, you will have to fight to convince me otherwise. Sure! Okay, I can't use the... The proprietary Parker on the Waterman. I can't use the Waterman on the Parker for the refills and all that. But other than that, it is it is the same nib. Looks like the same feed, although I can't see the whole thing on the Waterman Allure. Uh, definitely the same barrel. Okay, we're missing a little doodab of metal around the cap. Uh, the, the, the lip of the cap on the Vector, but... I mean, they even have the same little gap between the cap and the barrel. They're the same pen, but it's a good pen. Now, all right, I, I will concede it is depressing that Newell Rubbermaid has bought out such uh, large brands of pens, once formerly great brands of pens like Parker and Waterman. Yeah, I am sad about that. But sometimes good things come out of that. Sometimes you get some cross-fertilization between I, um, manufacturers. And I think Waterman and Parker have both come out with a winner here that's at a fairly decent price point. Now, Parker has the Jotter, which I'll be... I've filmed that one. I'm just not ready to publish it. I want to do some vintage stuff first. But Parker does have the Jotter, which is a decent pen. Uh, lower cost even than the Vector. None of them are the $3.99 I paid back in the 1980s, but hey, thanks, inflation. But I think they've come up with a really good pen. And I'm very happy for them. Now, apparently the original Vector is available still in India, and it's, well, I bought, one, one of the ones I bought was made in Malaysia. Uh, the ones that are translucent, I don't know where they're made, but let's see here. This is made, oh God, I can't read it. Oh, yeah. It doesn't say. This just is it. Let's see where this one's made. Made in USA, which is surprising. And frankly, for what I paid, I don't believe it. So, that's where I'm at with the Parker Vector. I really like the new Parker Vector. The old one was just meh. The new one, yeah. So, uh, if you're looking for a lower cost pen from a a good manufacturer, or well, I shouldn't say good, but from a vintage manufacturer, uh, the Waterman Allure, the Parker Vector are both good pens. Now, I have heard of a, a Waterman Graduate, 
from what I can find, that is only a steel version of the pen. I don't know the Waterman brand nearly as well as I know the Parker brand, so I can't comment real intelligently about that. So I hope one of my commenters who knows a lot more about the Waterman brand can say something smart, because I can't. So anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, pens in use may be a little delayed, maybe not, but uh, it's coming because... Uh, it's going to be on location and uh, look forward to sharing it with you. So I want to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.